Welcome to another episode of Focus Hive. Today we will be talking about cookies. In past few videos that um, I've been presenting, we have referred to cookies a couple of times. So I thought, why not come in and present what cookies are, uh, various aspects around cookies. This is one of the important concepts on web. Uh, whether you're creating a web application, websites, whatever, you need to know what cookies are and how do you build that. And as a user, it's important for your privacy. So let us understand cookies Aram say. And the reason I say Aram say is because while I was researching on this topic, I, I found millions of videos, but majority of them are like two, three minutes videos and um, God knows what they talk about. So I am going to talk about cookies in details. So if you're looking for a two, three minute definition of cookie, this is not the video. But I guarantee if you stick around, you'll know a lot more about cookies than the person sitting next to you. Stay tuned. Hold tight as we talk about cookies. So as I always start, let's look at the history of cookies, where it came from. So Mr. Lau Montuli, working at Netscape Communications, in 1994 created something called as Cookie. And this was created to give more seamless experience for people who are doing online commercial transactions. Now, fast forward 2018. What happened is GDPR went into effect. And something changed for everybody who was using online services. Your mailboxes got filled up. Your mailboxes was overwhelmingly full with emails from all the vendors that you were kind of interacting with on the web. And pretty much asking you to give your consent to store your information. Now, if you read on the screen, what GDPR says is to the extent that they are used to identify users, they qualify as personal data and are subject to the GDPR, which lets companies process data as long as they get consent or have what regulators deem as legitimate interest that is why today when you go to any website the first thing is plastered on your face is a notification that the website is going to use cookies so do you want or do you agree to it or not depending on your response to it the website behaves so if you say yes then the website would put a cookie and then start using or start tracking your behavior, your credentials, and we'll dig into it as to what the websites collect. But they collect and then they give you a seamless experience using that website. But there are some websites which if you say no, then they stop functioning for you or they have erratic behavior. But a majority would have no impact of you not accepting the cookie pop-up, which means they will not create a cookie and pretty much go their way ahead and show what you're asking for. And that is why we are talking about cookies because whenever we get a prompt, depending on the mood, we'd say yes or no. Uh, it's rarely that I would go read every single word, full stop, comma on that pop-up, right? We take it for granted. But uh, let's look at next further slides to understand what is going to be collected and stored and does that open an avenue for becoming a security risk so what are cookies very simple basic definition is like a, it's a small piece of data that a server sends to the web browser and the browser stores that information and sends it back to the server every time the browser is making a request to the server. 
Now, if you want to visualize it, just think of it as a user trying to connect to a server. Once the connection is established, the server puts a label and sends it back to the user. The user keeps that label with him or her. And the next request that the user makes, the label goes along with it. So now the server knows that it's coming from XYZ. And that's the whole reason why you would typically need a cookie. And that's why it's stored on the browser or the client side. And every request that the client makes, it takes the cookie along with it. It's like a ticket. It goes to the server and says, hey, it's me. And the server then recognizes that it's coming from whoever came first uh, and then responds back to that request. Now, why is it important that you get the ticket? Basically, that ticket tells that, uh, let's say, for an example, that ticket would have information such as you don't like pineapple on your pizza. So the next time you're going to the pizza shop, the server will not give pineapple on your pizza. That's the whole idea of cookie that the server should know about you, your preferences and your history of what you've been using so that they can store that information for your ease of access, right? Moving on, if you've understood what cookies are, we'll talk about types of cookies, right? Now, types of cookies, that there are various types of cookies that we have, uh, but two prominent or actually four prominent type of cookies that we would want to understand. The first or the most widely used is the session cookie. The session cookie is something that is created once you have established a session with the server. And this type of cookie is destroyed the moment your session is ended. So as long as you have the session with the server, connected session with the server, your cookie lives and provides the information about you to the server. But then there are parameters when cookies are created that the cookie should stay alive for X, Y, Z number of days. And those type of cookies are called as persistent cookies. So persistent cookies are cookies that are stored for a certain period of time whether or not you have a session with the server, right? Even if your session is disconnected, the cookie remains until the expiration date is set, right? So once the expiration date expires, then the cookie gets deleted, not before that. Now, the two other type of uh, cookies would be first party cookies and the third party cookies. First party cookie is more like my cookie is my cookie. (laughs) <laughs> which means if a particular website adds a cookie to your browser, then only that website is only that website is using it. And through that website only, uh, well, that website is putting cookie only for its own services, right? That is the first party cookie. Now, the third party cookie is like nowadays you would look at a website which has various components running on it. And those components could be from different third-party companies, such as you are accessing a website where you have YouTube videos, then that website would create its own cookie, its own first-party cookie, as well as it will allow YouTube to create its own cookie. So YouTube's cookie at that point becomes a third-party cookie, right? So each vendor have their cookie notice available on the web. So if you go and look up for the cookie notice, you will get the list of third party cookies that they allow because they interact with those third party applications through their website and let the user have that seamless experience. So they allow those third party cookies. And that's where you have uh, certain concerns. But we'll dig in in the next slides. But uh, the third party cookies would basically come alongside third-party content, such as embedded videos, banners, photos, ads, whatsoever, right? And then there are certain other cookies, such as a super cookie. A super cookie is a special type of cookie, which, once destroyed, can recreate itself. 
right? It And it can also recreate user profiles. So that's a dangerous one. And you have a Flash cookie very dedicated to Flash. Whenever uh, Adobe Flash is used on websites, it will create a cookie and that is called as a Flash cookie. Now, what's the purpose uh, of cookies? We'll talk about that, but let's first see what is stored in a cookie or what does a website collect when they are creating a cookie and then using cookies, right? So I've taken an example of uh, Amazon Web Services, the Amazon website or the Amazon services that you use, maybe AWS, maybe Amazon Prime, maybe the Amazon Shopping, whichever service that you're using, Amazon's cookie notice that I've brought this con content from. So what Amazon collects is basically your network and connection information, such as your IP address with which your computer is connected or the other devices to the internet and information about your internet service provider, uh, your computer and device information, application, browser type, <laughs> browser plugins, operating system, and your time zone setting. The location, the geolocation of your device, authentication and security credential information, content interaction information such as what you've downloaded, what you're streaming, what your playback, what you what you're using as playback, uh, the amount of duration that you're using those current content. It also stores the detail, like the full URL that is streaming on. It, in fact, goes ahead and captures information of what you viewed on any of the AWS offering. If, if there's an image, did you click on it? Did you hover your mouse on it? Or if you were looking at it, uh, how many seconds, minutes, nanoseconds you are on that page or on that section on that page. So it collects that granular amount of information for about you. So, and then stores it in the cookie. And then the next interaction that you do, it will use that information to give you more catered advertisements, more catered uh, search results, uh, which is why your experience on AWS becomes much more enhanced, right? Now, if I look at the purpose of cookies, uh, you would understand that there are three different purposes. One is your session management, which means if you're logged into the Amazon shopping website, you've added a few things in your cart, and let's say you closed your browser and you opened your browser again, or let's say you moved to different tabs. Surpri surprisingly, you would see your cart having the content that you had selected. So it's not lost, right? Then that is because you have a session cookie in your browser created by Amazon at that point in time, which has your shopping cart information, which is called, a, which is used for session management. The other one is personalization, which means when you're going and searching for certain information, uh, you are looking at certain type of information. You have certain themes that you've set on your uh, account. You've certain other preferences that you've set on your account that is saved in your cookies. And that is what is used for personalization. Then comes tracking, recording and analyzing users behavior, which means out of 20 comedy shows, which type of comedy show you like more? What stand-up genre you like more? What kind of shows you like more? What kind of books you like more? What kind of uh, uh, perfume you like more, which you are purchasing again and again, right? While scrolling, where do you suddenly stop and don't move for five minutes? Those are all your uh, user behavior. Where do you scroll more? Where do you click more? And all of that is stored for tracking purposes. So these are three main purposes of a cookie that the web services or the uh, websites use it for. 
Now, how does it work? When does it get created? So if you look at a basic HTTP header request that happens between a client and a server, basically you can get further details in your RFC 6265. That's the URL. You can easily search on Google. It's available. Now, what happens is when you're when you as a client are trying to access a website called example.com, it has a request, a get request in its HTTP header, which is get HTTP 1.1. The server then responds back 200 OK. If you remember the API session, you'll relate to it 200 of what it means. And it will also send a command called as set cookie colon session ID equals one, two, three, four, five. I mean, that's example. But it'll send set cookie and it'll give the session ID. Now, with that, what happens is the next request that the client is making, again, get whatsoever, your cookie is going along with it. So your ticket is going along with it. So now the server knows who you are what you like, what you want, all of that. And based on that, it presents the information to you. And that's how the cookies work. And, uh, well, we now know what is cookie, how they work, what do they store, what are different type of cookies. So how do we manage them, right? Today, we are getting so many prompts, and it's being plastered everywhere on all, all websites, making us click on OK, OK, OK. <laughs> so how do we manage them, right? So let's look at managing cookies. So if you go into your web browser settings and search for cookies, you'll get an option which will have multiple choices for you, whether you don't want cookies at all, whether you want cookies from third party or not, whether you want to uh, allow cookies or choose to uh, respond every time that it prompts you whenever there's cookie getting created, it prompts you that do you want to create such kind of an options. So with those options, you could manage cookies on your uh, on your browser. You also have a setting where it says that clear out cookies once the browser is closed. So that another override you could set to ensure that you don't leave cookies hanging around. One of the important option that you see on your browser setting is called as do not track. Now, what is DNT? Do not track or DNT is a flag within the HTTP header. That pretty much tells the websites that back off. Don't track my preferences or don't track my behavior on the website. So I highly recommend that you should enable do not track on your browsers because that way, you are safer than sorry. Yes, you will not have your, you will not see the same kind of uh, ads on your social media that you've just looked up on Amazon. You'll miss that. But just to explain what it does is basically sends a flag with your HTTP header. Uh, whenever you're, whenever you're making a request to a server, first time it goes along with that and it tells the website that do not track. Though you can create the cookie, but don't track my behavior. So if those service providers are honoring DNT, they will back off. If they're not honoring DNT, then they would continue to do what they do. So it's important that uh, as a creator of uh, web application, web services, it's important that we acknowledge and honor DNT requests. Now, finally, are cookies a security risk? The answer to that is Cookies are text files on your browser stored on your machine. And they are transmitted over internet whenever you're making a request. So one, that is stored on your computer. And the second, it is transferred over the web. Imagine someone gets their hands on your precious cookie. Now your cookie, what does it have? It has information about you. It has your credentials. It has your behavior. It has everything about you. So if someone gets access to your cookie, it's very easy for them to impersonate you, which means they could get onto Amazon and be you and get everything that you are getting from it. So I'll leave that 
to the audience to define whether it is a security risk or not. There are many ways you can secure your cookies. And we could talk about that in another session. But this is where I stop talking about cookies. I hope after this video, you would be able to know what cookies are, what does it store, how it is used, and how should we manage cookies. With that, thank you so much and have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.